Hello and welcome to episode 14 of my Mind, Body, Spirit series. I am talking about the body. So one thing came to mind when I was reading Autobiography of a Yogi. Well, first of all, I'll tell you what I noticed about my son. So my son at this time, when I'm making the video, he's 15. And he's always been kind of strange about his diet and certain foods um, would produce uh, unwelcome response in his body. For example, dairy and especially dairy combined with sugar would give him a lot of mucus. So I found if I cut him out of dairy or cut him off dairy, that would that reap health benefits like beyond anything you could imagine. It's just clean up the mucus. He, he was, he was happier. He was, um, when he was on dairy, he would get cranky. So go reverse back to when he was first born. I had a dream about him before he was born and he was dressed in white and he was laying on a counter and one of my sisters was there in my dream. And I turned to her and I said, what will I feed this kid? <laughs> Not knowing that it was a premonition of what was going to happen because after he was born, he refused to drink my breast milk. He refused to um, drink formula. So I had a neighbor who was a naturopathic doctor and she came over and muscle tested him for to see what his body would respond well to and he tested a positive for goat's milk. So if you know anything about goat's milk or even milk, like dairy milk, it's best in its raw form because it has um, healthy and I hear digestive enzymes in the raw material food or liquid so that your body can actually enhance the properties of it when it goes into your body. So once it's pasteurized, they cook all the good nutrients out of it and then they put them back in artificially. So your body has a hard time dealing with that. So because my son tested so well for goat's milk, well, I started him first on just the pasteurized stuff that I could buy in the store, but he got constipated. So, and then that's hard on their tummy, right? If they're having trouble going number two. so. I had a neighbor who had goats and I was able to get some goat's milk from her and he did so well in that I made homemade formula with, it had raw goat's milk in it, angivita yeast, maple syrup, um, and a probiotic. So he did really well on that. He was very healthy, he was very happy, he gained lots of weight. Later on I introduced, you know, uh, carrot and apple juice to him that I used with my juicer. I made my own juice for him and so he was very healthy. So fast forward to later on in his life, oh my goodness, this kid was such a picky eater. He would hardly eat anything. It only had to be certain kinds of food and he didn't like his food mixed up on his plate and whatever. And my thing is about food is I think, I feel that we're meant to enjoy the foods that we like and we're meant to take them into our bodies and be grateful and that the food vibrates higher. So, you know, a lot of people are like, well, just make him eat whatever. But my son is just stubborn. It comes by that honestly on both sides of the family. So I made sure that, yeah, he got to eat the foods that he liked that were really healthy. They were good for him. He liked good food and he also liked the food that was not so good. You know, it's like, it's okay, but it just doesn't have a, a lot of nu nutrients in it, you know. But what I found was so interesting about him was when he was sick, or whatever, he just wouldn't eat and he would just drink and that's fine with me because I know his body is getting rid of whatever is causing the illness. And usually it wasn't anything physical, it was actually always his emotions would make him ill. If he got lots of anxiety or he was around someone that their energy clashed, he would get immediately sick. And so there are certain places I couldn't take him to. So his physical body was affected by people's energy and it was usually by people who weren't dealing with their stuff that they are meant to deal with and so it seems as though my son would take on their weird energy that they weren't dealing with and he would try to expel it for them and it would make him physically ill. So I, ended, I noticed that around certain people he got sick all the time so I stopped having him around those people because you know what do you want more? Do you want to be around people that make your kids sick or do you want a healthy child? So I chose the healthy child. So another thing I noticed about him is that he if, even if he didn't eat very good food, he was healthy. And that was just seemed like odd to me because I feel we are a reflection of what we eat, right? You know, we feed ourselves healthy cellular 
structures like good food we put it into our bodies and our body can make use of those nutrients but he he seemed to be able to take nutrients from the air and assimilate them and it just was like okay this is really weird because i don't really never known anyone to be able to do that so when i was reading this book autobiography of a yogi there's a woman in that book that uh yogananda meets i think it was he was in europe he met her and she hadn't eaten oh no that was in europe that was in india she hadn't eaten since she was very young and her story was that she was when she was little younger she used to eat all the time and she had a weight problem and she everybody would always tease her yeah, why are you eating so much and so one day she prayed to god and she asked that she be able to live without food and that's what happened she was able to live without eating and so she doesn't she doesn't urinate she doesn't defecate she has nothing but she virtually lives on the nutrients in the air so people can, people can do that like people are so amazing like who even knew and lots of people think you know if they go on a water pass like oh my god i'm gonna die but the truth is you're not so that leads me to another thing about fasting and also about how your body feels so i think it was eight days ago i heard from my guides from spirit from my camp my food guide that they wanted me to go off of all animal products so that was like no butter in my coffee and I don't really I was using honey a while ago but I haven't been for a long time so that no animal like no products that came from animals so that just leaves like vegan food right and they also said no refined sugar and then i found i was allowed to have some coconut sugar but and so i muscle test for that right but they the powers that be for me wanted me to clean my body up and clean my my cellular structure up and so i found as i went through those days i think today is day eight oh i wake up in the morning and i feel like not good so i knew that my cells were expelling toxins because you're kind of stirring up the here like what lies beneath and then when you're detoxing your body you will not always feel very good sometimes you'll feel like crap because literally the crap is coming to the surface and especially if you exercise you stir up those toxins which are stored in your fat cells so you have to understand that if you feel crappy it's not a good idea to quit it's a good idea to move through it and drink more water so i added more water to my daily uh, diet like i'm still eating you know uh, vegetables and you know, i made chickpeas in my crock pot and lentils and so i'm always eating those like making sure i'm getting vegetarian protein i'm getting lots of cruciferous vegetables um i add like olive oil to my cruciferous vegetables and uh, apple cider vinegar and salt pepper it's nice that's an easy way to make a dressing that there's no toxins in and make sure your your oils are cold pressed right so I found though like it would fluctuate one day I'd feel good and then the next day I just feel horrible and I wake up in the morning and think oh I feel just gross so that is just means I'm expelling toxins from my body and they told me that I'm to clear, I was to clear old energy. And so the old energy doesn't have to do just with the physical properties of the food. It has to do with the energetic properties of the food, the people who prepared the food, how the animals were treated, how they were processed, what the people were like when they processed it. Because as that food gets processed, it literally takes on the characteristics of everyone who's worked with it. That's why if you're a person who you have your energy sensitive and you can pick some food up in, you know, the supermarket and you can feel the energy of that food, it can feel like positive or negative, dead or alive or whatever. And you just are sensitive to that. You know which food is going to do the best for your body, but you can also alter that by holding it in your hands for 30 seconds and blessing the food before you prepare it, before you eat it or whatever. In the medical medium, Anthony William talks about that in his book, Medical Medium. He says, just the act of blessing your food for 30 seconds or more will actually raise the vibration and usually gets the food to vibrate on your level. So if you've been working really hard on raising your vibration and that some of the food that you're putting in your body is not the kindest food for your body, 
and you know just make sure that you bless it and then you can actually feel it right raise it raise the vibration you can feel the foods vibration rise to where it meets your vibrational standard and then you can ingest it and it'll do a much better job on keeping your body healthy so it was interesting to note that about my son and that was several years ago that i noticed maybe not several years ago i think it was about when he was in grade three which is quite a few years ago he's in grade 10 now so <laughs> that was a while ago but i thought wow this is a pretty cool kid and i know that in some of his lives he was a plant. So he, so people who suffer from seasonal affection, whatever that is, seasonal affection, affected disorder, whatever that is, you know what it is. They don't do well when there's not a lot of sunlight. And that's really how plants are, right? They need sunlight, they need water, and they that's how they make their nutrients so my son i regret after i took my past life regression hypnotherapy course in 2000 it was a 2015 you know i got to anybody who would be my you know volunteer or whatever i was able to work on them i would and i really like to work with my son because his mind is very quick and at the, about the age of eight is where their conscious and subconscious mind are on the same level and after the age of eight separates the conscious mind rises and the subconscious mind st stays down here nice and low so i found that my son i could actually work with him and he didn't even have to close his eyes he didn't even have to i didn't have to do anything to get him into that relaxed state where the conscious mind is down to about here it was so fast and he could tell me you know uh, what life was causing that so when we notice that he doesn't do well when there's not a lot of sun he gets um, upset or cranky or just oh, he's just not happy I wanted to know why so we took a few minutes and you know I said you know let's see the life that caused you to feel this way on these gloomy days and he said oh I'm a plant and there's no Sun and I feel so sad and so now you know <laughs> there's a reason why people feel that way because we haven't always been people right we may have been plants we may have had lives as plants we may have had lives as a tree we may have had lives as a cow or horse or chicken it could be anything and so the energy from those lives could be causing us problems in our current life and you know those of you who watch me regularly on youtube or you know you've come to me for a past life regression session you know how powerful those sessions are because you can find out for yourself what is the cause of any issue that you have usually is a past life it could be a life in the future right because everything is happening all at once and your mind will go to the life that's causing that concern that you have it could be concern like migraines a fear of heights fear of water um <laughs> uh, being around argumentative people or people who are always challenging you uh, being scared of certain things like um, horses cows it could even be a cat could be scared of a cat and I mean you know cats are like about this big and why should you be scared of one but people still have those fears and yes they seem to be irrational but there's absolutely a reason why and your mind shows you why but those fears cause some physical problems for example some people aren't allowed are allowed don't allow themselves to fly on a plane well why would that be either they were in a plane crash or they were actually the pilot who flew the plane <laughs> or you know they have a fear of having their head under the water well maybe they had a life then when they drown right or someone you know submerged them in water and they they drown that way so the mind always knows but it will the mind is so powerful it can cause physical problems and it can even cause problems with not being able to absorb nutrients from foods <sighs> i heard this is interesting if you had a life as a rock i mean can you imagine if you had a life as a rock and you didn't need any nutrients and so you're hard and you have a impermeable surface right if you're a hard rock that could cause some issues with you being able to absorb nutrients and I even hear iron so I feel like some of you are watching or going to be watching that could be an issue for you so <laughs> you can always you know look into your own mind or you can find someone like me who's uh, certified in past life regression hypnotherapy and you can have a session to see why your body is acting the way it is why your mind is stuck on the things that it is 
or why you seem to be attracting the same circumstances into your life over and over again. Is it all of your lives, any of your lives could show you that. And if it wasn't a, a different life, it was this life, your mind will go to that spot to show you where that concern came from and that and seeing it or sensing it will actually release you from that trauma that caused you to have that concern. <sighs> so another thing about the body I want you to be aware of and I'm pretty sure you know, not we don't always do it though, is your body is meant to be physical, right? So you have to, I make a joke, it's like a dog, you have to take it for a walk or you have to find some form of physical exercise that you really like. So some people like team sports and other people like individual sports. I certainly love individual sports and I've always loved individual sports and I noticed that I know that's just because the only person I'm competing with is myself and so it feels good, like I wanna do better than I did the day before. So I find a way to feed my body that physical exercise because if I don't, I feel tired. I actually feel more tired if I don't work out than if I do. And then like I had said in other videos that I really found, I found last year, my body really likes to work out in a gym. It really likes the weight machines. It likes working out. It likes an all over workout and have a really strong body, which I attest to. I feel, I heard Gen, I was going to say Gen X and they said, no, not really. They said that body strength is created in your mind. And so I'm channeling some messages for you right now. And they said, they told me to call you dear viewers. <laughs> I love you watching these, so thank you. So they said that this physical strength of your body is in your mind. And so if you're having problems with your bones not being as strong as you want them to be, they said it's your mentality. And either your mentality is really harsh and brittle and you don't want to listen to someone, therefore you could have this no and like, mm, I'm not going to listen to you. And that can cause brittle bones that are resistant to flexibility. And if you have bones that are weak, and you may be weak-minded, you don't stand up for yourself, that could also cause some, some, they said, skeletal issues because you don't have a strong bone structure, you don't have a strong structure. But if you stay very positive and very, they said, maintain a level like assertment, like you just know who you are and you are, you don't waver from your belief and you don't allow people to mislead you or whatever you stay and they are staying centered in your core and certainly with your spine, you're like nice and strong, not rigid though. There's a difference between rigidity and strength and strength is like you can be flexible but you also are meant to stand in your own power and they're showing me that if you practice standing, with your feet flat on the floor. And they said, this is cool because I like to do this yoga pose. It's the tree pose where you stand on one foot, and you bring the other foot up to the inside of the leg. So if you say you stand on your left foot and you bring your uh, right foot up to the inside of your leg and you pose there and see how long they're saying, see if you can stay there for 10 to 15 seconds on each leg. And they want you to do that to see if your body is balanced. So, they're saying just try that every morning or every night but they said morning is best because you're they this is interesting they said that so i'm telling my guides for you right our guides because i'm sharing them with you oh and today it was also revealed that my guides they're um they're i share them with my son so i think that's awesome so you can check in with your body to see how balanced it is they said the morning is the best because you are most like you in the morning. You haven't gone through the day and you haven't carried someone else's stuff with you like you do towards the evening. And so this is something that we do when, when I do a Reiki session, if I do one in person, we at the end we do, uh, it's called Kenyoko Ho. So you, what you do is you brush off this arm, brush off this arm, and then you go across the body like this and across the solar plexus and then this way. So you're brushing off any energy that you have attracted from that person you were working on during the session, session. So you're just cutting it off. And if you want, you could do that at the end of the day to rid yourself of anyone's energy that you have trapped in your energy field. I think that's a wonderful thing to do, especially, you know, maybe when you get home from work and like nobody at home is doing anything like that to you, usually, right? And or another thing that um, I was taught by a woman who would come to me for an intuitive course that I taught, she told me that she 
at the end, uh, before she leaves work actually, she works in a fire station and she has a shower. And so she never ever takes any anything home with her that from the emotional tragedies that she sees because she sees some pretty bad stuff, right? They go to fires and you know sometimes they can help people and sometimes they can't. So she said she does that to disconnect and literally the water washes off all those emotions from her body so she physically isn't bringing anything, any emotions home. And that's a wonderful gift you can give yourself, especially if you feel like you're kind of off, you don't feel very healthy or something like that. You just take a shower to rinse the water off. I always thank my water from the shower head. I thank the water for cleansing my body and for being so good. I wanted to share you with, with you. I've, I showed you in my last video. Sorry, I'm going to reach down for this. I showed you in my last video this uh, release ring. So I have a small one like this that I that I bought, I can't remember how much it was, but I bought it at um, a physical store. And I hang it over my shower head because I found my water had been smelling weird, like not, like sulfur, and it didn't smell very pleasant. After I, I hung that release ring, or sorry, that charge ring over my shower head, my water doesn't have a stink anymore. That is amazing, don't you think? Like, whoa, who would know? That's the power of these these crystalline rings, you know. And that ring is only this big, like it's and it you know wasn't very pricey. But you know, something simple like that can actually change the I heard the they said the mechanics of how the water comes into my house and also the molecular structure and the chemical composition of the water as it comes into the house because this is interesting. I am getting the message that the water felt like it was kind of being invasive and it was kind of it was fighting with the energy of the of the taps and didn't really want to come out or something so it was like making a stink about it that's really interesting another thing that was interesting is the summer around my home a neighbor had dropped in when i was having a yard sale and said that a lot of people in the area were having trouble with their water but my water consistency hadn't changed at all and i was really grateful that for that and i I feel like I attribute it to the love that I give to my water or it's just good quality water or it's how the land where I live vibrates but they said that's it they said it's how the land where I live vibrates because I like to take care of it and I don't want it to be too um, like pristine or anything I just basically mow my grass I don't have anything else here but I try to clean my yard up so it looks tidy and people drive in the yard and when I drive home I like it you know it looks good it feels good so be physical make sure that you take your body out for some exercise yeah another thing that we have to remember is that our physical bodies aren't always meant to be on the go so we're meet, we are meant to feed them properly with the nutrients that our bodies can absorb and the food stuff that our body likes and enjoys and wants to take in and we're meant to make sure that we hydrate it because our body is mostly made of water, which is interesting. I think, wow. So if you get dehydrated, your body can't work as well as it can if it's hydrated, right? And another thing you have to remember is you need to rest because when you sleep at night, that's when your cells repair themselves and you, they slough off old cells that are, that are damaged, I heard. And they regenerate and grow new cells that are healthy and strong because your body needs that eight hours of sleep to do that cellular repair, cellular division, you know, taking out, they said it's basically like taking out the trash and putting in new good cells that assimilate and become part of your cellular structure. So your body is amazing, right? You know that. Um, your body actually can tell you things like, it can warn you if something doesn't feel right you'll feel it in your solar plexus or you might feel panic in your heart space so a few years ago i had met this a parent at uh, my son's school and oh whenever i saw this parent i just went into freak out mode and i couldn't understand why it sent my body into a panic and i felt anxiety here in my heart space and in my solar plexus so i went into meditation to find out why this person scared me so much and we had been uh, together and 
previous lives about 10 of them and in every single life that person had killed me so you can understand how my body my cells still remembered that and went into panic and obviously I had some karma to work out with this person because if I had worked the karma out I wouldn't be feeling the panic when I was around him I wouldn't be scared so karma is an interesting concept and I talk about it in quite a few of my videos because karma just means that you did something in a previous life and you were you didn't do what you were meant to do. So you wavered from your course and so then you get retribution in this life that you have to fix the karma from that life. And I have to tell you that you could learn you could learn a lot about karma by paying attention to the places where you've lived. If you ever had a life in a certain geographic location, a physical location that was very difficult for you, chances are you had some karma in that specific geographic location and people also are in that geographic location with you so that you can work your karma out with them. And once you do, the nice thing about working out karma is that once you work it out, you are done. You never have to do it again. And isn't that amazing? So if you aren't aware of how some of these instances are coming into your life and how they're karmic, all you're doing is complaining about it. You don't understand why. It's a good idea to sit quiet in a meditation and ask your mind to show you, you know, what is this teaching me? What is this trying to show me? And of course, how can I deal with it? Because I find with that, you know, you might not be able to talk to the person you're trying to work the karma out because they might just not care. They don't want to know. Not everybody wants to know. Hard to believe, right? And they may not want to work on their karma in this life, which is, that's fine. That's their choice. But if you are, you have a progressive mind and you really want to work through your karma so you never have to repeat it again and you can have a free, easier life, then you want to work on your karma and you want to work on the things that are either making you ill or making you um, like just making your life more difficult than how you want it to be because you have to look for the answer inside yourself. And then one more thing I want to talk about, well two, um, one is, and I had someone tell, I'd say mention this to me that they felt just exhausted in the morning. I say, oh well, while you were sleeping, you were out astral traveling and you were working. So what you need to do to your to say to your body before you go to sleep is, if I choose to do some work tonight while I astral travel, I really want to be rested when I wake up in the morning because then you can switch that so you don't have to be so tired in the morning, like physically. And the last thing I want to talk about is your body has cellular memory. So if you have had any lives where you were very physical and you were really good at doing something, whether it was running, swimming, skiing, hiking, biking, horseback riding, anything like that, your body has stored that, or your mind has stored that cellular memory and it translates to your cells so that you'll be able to reproduce the same sort of excellent physical activity. So I found that I had lives where I used to be a freestyle skier. I had a life where I was a freestyle skier and a female. And it was early, 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 like in the early like 30s and 40s or something like that. And so now when I ski, I can actually feel how good it feels to be balanced. And, you know, I used to teach the little kids uh, slalom racing and I used to... Uh, tour some kids around uh, on the mountains in Switzerland and that's that skiing was just it was just a part of how I lived and I loved it I just it was just natural for me I just really loved that part of my life so you could have other you could have other lives and you know it could just be that um that motion that you do you could be riding a horse or you could be running down the road or you could be walking or you could be hiking or you could be swimming and you could have a memory triggered in your mind oh hey i've done this before and your mind will actually give you a little insight and show you like a snippet of the life that you had when you were active like that and you'll actually feel it in your body cells and what a wonderful gift your body can give you right like how amazing is your body i love talking to people about their bodies and the diet that they have and you know if that's something that you would like to look more into then definitely book me for a session i have health and body sessions i have 
past life regression hypnotherapy sessions that I can do in person or by Skype, or if you just want a spirit session to know more about yourself and who you are, then definitely you know book one of those with me. Thank you so much for watching and just really pay attention to your body and love it just like you're meant to.